Okay, welcome back. We are starting Half-Life 2 Episode 1. And I know I said I was going to take a bit of a break from Half-Life 2. I just wrapped up Half-Life 2 the other day after getting about halfway through it almost a year ago. And then finally coming back to it a couple weeks ago and finishing the second half. Um, but I noticed that like someone made a comment that they were getting recommended my videos a bunch. So I guess the algorithm was picking up my Half-Life 2 videos, and they were getting decent views. So I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and do episode one. It's only five chapters. And admittedly, I've only played episode one twice. I played it once when the orange box first came out. Didn't really care all that much for it. Uh, and as a result, I didn't come back to it until... Uh, during the pandemic, when I had a little more time on my hands, I finally decided to give it another shot and played through it again and liked it a little bit better, but still came back feeling underwhelmed. It's a shorter game, uh, only five chapters, much shorter than the Half-Life 2 adventure. The premise is hit or miss with some fans. On the one hand, it is kind of cool seeing the Citadel all busted up and you have to find a way to contain it and then the you know dark fusion reactor uh, that Gordon Freeman initiates at the end of uh, the catastrophic event that Dr. Freeman initiates at the end of Half-Life 2 uh, and then find a way to escape City 17. So on the one hand it is kind of a cool premise but on the other uh, it obviously pales in comparison to episode 2 which is a fantastic game, but much harder. And I had to go ahead and just start it. I went ahead and paused it because um, the uh, menu screen was Dr. Kleiner giving a speech, and I didn't want to talk over Dr. Kleiner, so whatever, just went ahead and started it. So I don't know if we'll be getting to episode two for a while. We're going to start episode one. I will do at least one episode for now, and then I'm going on a cruise for a week. And uh, when I get back, I'll get back to uh, doing the Half-Life 2 Episode 1 games. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say to preface Episode 1. We'll talk a little bit more about it as uh, we play on. So let's get this, let's light this firecracker. Tell me, Dr. Freeman, if you can. You have destroyed so much. What is it exactly that you have created? Can you name even one thing? I thought not. Great credit to Mike Shapiro, the voice actor for G-Man. He does a fantastic job. I love his voice. has kind of a slithery quality to it. He has to be somewhere around here. Drop what you're 
you're doing and help me over here. Oh my god! Gordon! I was so worried. <laughs> hey, the gravity gun. Give it to him, dog. <laughs> there, Gordon. Dog's happy to see you. I can tell. <laughs> okay, dog. Go get the monitor set up so we can check in with my dad. He must be worried sick about us. He was so sure I wouldn't find you here. The Citadel's really coming apart. I still don't know how we got out of there. The last thing I remember is... Green falling. A huge explosion, and then... I heard Vortigaunts. Next thing I knew, Dog was digging me out of the rubble. Oh, it's all so strange. We should... Alex, come in. It's my dad. We've been trying to reach him for hours. That really looks... Cares that we found you. That looks so awesome, by the way. The Citadel falling God. apart. Sweetheart, come in! Dad, we found him. You found Gordon? I don't believe it. But listen, you two have to get out of the city. The Citadel could blow at any moment. There's no question that it will, I'm afraid. Our remote sensors indicate the process is accelerating toward a dark energy flare. Is Anyone it? left in the vicinity will be subjected to energetic events whose Isaac, effects are please. beyond my powers of speculation. The ravages to cellular material are Liner, stop! Dad? Oh dear, Eli, I'm sorry, but surely there's no need for undue alarm. Alex is well out of harm's way by now. Well, actually, we're still at the Citadel. What? Oh dear, but there's really no time. The core is exceedingly close to collapse. Why, there's no way to get far enough without first... Well, nothing short of a direct intervention in the core could possibly retard the reaction. You mean... Going in? Into the core, yes. But it's far too dangerous to consider. The chamber will be bathed in radiation. Well, you do have the hazard suit. If we found a way into the Citadel, it's possible we Alex, could... no! But, Dad! Izzy, talk some sense into her! I'm sorry, Eli, but I don't see any other way. It would help us evacuate more citizens. We can do this, Dad. Okay, Alex, so, uh, okay. Okay, just promise me. Promise me that you won't take a single unnecessary risk. I promise. I love you. I love you too, baby. I'll be praying for you. Don't worry. I'll see you soon. Let's see if we can find a way into the Citadel from somewhere along the rim. Hmm. Dog, a little help, please? Thanks. Okay, boy, pack up and meet us on the far side of this ridge. Whoa, what a drop. After you, Gordon. Taking so long. Dog. Just a hobby Dog. channel. Look out! Oh my God! Oh my God! 
dog. That's not too helpful. There has to be a way to get across. But how? What about... Dog? Dog, where are you going? Was it something I said? Huh? Dog, what are you... I think dog needs a few bolts tightened. Is this supposed to help us? Wait a minute. Oh no. <laughs> You're not serious. Well, <laughs> Gordon, unless you have a better suggestion, he is a robot. He's done the math. Enough for Get me. out of here as fast as you can. Go find Dad. We'll catch up. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll miss you too. Now, don't worry about me. I'll see you soon. Let's do it. Before I change my... Okay. Careful. Hold on. Whoa. Phew. Whew. Good throw, dog. Now go, boy. Go on. You'll be fine. Just... Uh-oh. What now? Whoa. starts. A lot of dialogue from Alex, so I'm afraid uh, commentary is going to be very limited. Some of you might appreciate that. But like I said, if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is just a hobby channel, just here to goof off, play some games. This is unbelievable. I had no idea. Oh, what a drop. If you saw any ads before this video, I apologize. I have AdSense turned off. But when there's copyrighted music, there's nothing I can do. YouTube runs ads regardless. Oh my god. Stalkers. Well, they, they shouldn't bother us if we leave them alone. 
I'll just disable this field and... Damn, I can't get this down. Something... It's that stock. He's holding it from the other side. We don't have time to look for another way around. where those roller mines are going? I've got an idea. are going to dump out and come after us as soon as we hit the switch, so we've got to be quick. set the targeting system on these things. A little extra juice in the right spot, and it's on our side. I'll hold it out where I can work on it. There it is. It's a lot more unstable, but it should last long enough to take out the stock. We can get through now. Let's go. Gravity gun. Doing gravity gun puzzles. I don't think we should hang around. Through that? This console has some useful information. Let me see if I can pin down a path to the core. I can Are still you? deliver Earth, but not without trying out. The portal destination is. 
is untenable. Surely you can set the relay elsewhere. There's no way I can survive oh, that fire. Oh, God, it's just an old recording. The host body must be joking. I can't possibly. Oh, no, all right, Kevin, that's what it fight. takes. Just hurry. He's right behind me. The last testimony of Dr. Green. Hell? Before we caught up to him. I don't think these alien creatures are quite explained adequately in neither in episode two or episode one or episode two. This, these two games left a lot more questions than answers. Get out of here! Once again, we got the overpowered gravity gun. And I think one of the most disappointing aspects of episode one and episode two, uh, we don't return to Zen or any alien worlds. Everything takes place on Earth. And now it's starting to feel a lot like Portal.
things are not going well for the Combine, they're still fighting. Yeah, if uh, I know that there's no chance we're ever going to get episode 3. It's an internet joke at this point. It's, it's been an internet joke for a long time. Uh, but it always seemed kind of strange to me that um, with Duke Nukem forever, everyone... Looks like this could be a transport elevator to the core. Everyone roasted the fact that Duke Nukem forever uh, took 12 years to come out. But you know what? Half-Life 3 has taken way longer. Yeah, we must be on the right track. Look up! Watch out! Sends the first chapter, undo alarm. The 
This could be it, Gordon. All right, so we're this is the start of chapter two, direct intervention. So we'll go ahead, stop here, save here, and uh, next time we play, it'll be direct intervention. And you know what? On the way out, we're just gonna go ahead and quit. And see if we get the, the good loading screen or the bad loading. If it's the bad loading screen, it's the one where Dr. Kleiner is giving a speech. If it's the good loading screen, it's the one where the Citadel is falling apart. That's oh Dr. Kleiner God. giving a speech. Striders. Therefore, I repeat, evacuate City 17 at once, yeah, if this not one's sooner. Stupid. I cannot state this without enough so undue we'll go ahead and emphasis. Quit here. On a lighter note, if you are already in one of our designated safe zones, I feel obliged to point out that a more fortunate side effect of the reactor's destruction is the complete removal of the Combine's reproductive suppression field. Previously, certain protein chains important to the process of embryonic development were selectively prevented from forming. This is no longer the case. For those so inclined, now would be an excellent time for procreation. Which is to say, in layman's terms, you should give serious consideration to doing your part for the revival of the species. We must make the most of the time we have, as it is by no means certain how much time we have secured ourselves before the Combine attempt to restore their dominion, as they certainly shall. Since this is, in fact, the first opportunity we have had to speak openly of the baleful influence of the Combine, there is much ground to cover. And, in fact, I hope to institute a series of useful bulletins in the days ahead. However, for now, we will have to content ourselves with some relatively meager exposition. The destabilization of the City-17 reactor has had repercussions that were not entirely unexpected, although we hardly dared speak this hope ahead of time. The destructive pulse forced a damper on the entire network of linked Citadel reactors. Thus, for the time being, I believe that all Combine portals have failed completely, as well as all communications systems based on that technology. In short, the Combine are completely cut off. Combine forces currently stationed on Earth are now isolated units, stranded. However, this is most likely a temporary state of affairs. As we once learned to our dismay, even the relatively tiny fracture at Black Mesa gave our enemies an opening which they were able to force ever wider as they poured through in greater and greater numbers. In addition to the completely xenotheric species, there are many modified post-human allies still remaining on Earth who will be doing their utmost to re-establish lines of communication and supply with the larger forces. Even so, there is greater reason for hope now than at any time in the past decade. We have made, in secret, several technological advances which we will do our best to deploy in advance of the Combine's return. We continue to diligently assemble and train a new generation of scientists and technicians. For what the Combine fear the most is not any tangible human weapon, but our will, our intellect, our ability to respond selectively and rationally to every terror they turn against us. We place our firmest hope in the human spirit, even knowing how easily it may be shattered. We have all seen friends and family crushed by the Combine. Some of our neighbors have allowed themselves to be co-opted and purged of their humanity by the military machine. And those who resisted have met a most terrible fate. Still, I cannot overstate how important it is that we retain our humanity. Only this will allow us to hold together as we must for their inevitable return and what is certain to be unimaginable retaliation.
And, uh, oh yes, if you missed any part of this message, it will loop repeatedly until there is no point in looping it any longer. I apologize for any inadvertent errors or omissions. As you can imagine, we have had scarcely time to record, let alone rehearse. What's that, Eli? Oh, right. This has been Dr. Isaac Kleiner, formerly of Black Mesa, now simply a citizen, like all of you of Earth. Let me just add to all those who can hear me now, as we struggle out of the shadow of our malefactors, welcome back to the light. Now, where did I put that calculator? Careful, Lamar! These lamps are quite hot! <clears throat> Is this on? Yes. Very well. I... I am not much of a public speaker, but I'll... I'll do my best. <clears throat> Fellow citizens! Residents of City 17 and environs, by which I mean sentient residents, of course, a human and otherwise, although I believe there is little need to explain recent developments to our Vortigaunt allies. At any rate, <clears throat> first, as a matter of great urgency, if you find yourself still within the confines of City 17, you are well advised to leave the city at once by the fastest means available to you. We have restored service to much of the commuter transport system in order to carry citizens out of the city as quickly as possible. We have also established camps and triage areas in the surrounding environs. I repeat, you must evacuate the city at once, while there was certainly a great...